dear Lord. If he cannot share a life with me, is it wrong to ask that he not share it with anyone? That we go on as we go on now, him stopping by at any hour, always the brightest part of our lives, a natural and easy member of the family. I would be content if he would just stay single, Lord. That's it. If he would just stay single, Lord, that would be enough for me to be perfectly satisfied. Almost. Amen. Emma! <clears throat> Forgive me. Uh, I was, um, I was lost in my thoughts. And how are you? Happy? W well, I'm... happy to see you, as always. Ah. I didn't, uh, I didn't know that you were back. Just. Ah. Yes, just. I'm on my way home. Uh, I was just there. May I join you? Of course. Oh, dear. What? What? Oh, oh, something about the um, deer we need for the uh, venison stew. Uh huh. Emma, there's, there's something I have to ask. Oh, wait. Uh, now that you are back, there is some news that will surprise you. Of what nature is this news? The very best. It is a wedding between two people. Oh, yes, between um, Jane and Mr. Churchill. Mr. Weston wrote to me. Undoubtedly, you were not surprised. Well. But... I seem doomed to blindness. Time will heal your wound. My wound? I know you must have been cruelly disappointed by his secret. He's a scoundrel. You are kind. But I must tell you that I quickly saw that Frank lacked qualities, honesty being one of them which are essential to me in any kind of friend. Am I... Uh, is that true? He imposed on me, but he has not injured me. Yes. He got everything he wanted at great expense to others and at no cost to himself. He offends me deeply. Yet there is... There's something in his situation that I envy. Did I mention that we are having a new drain installed? You will not ask me the point of my envy. Well, perhaps you are wise. But I... <laughs> I cannot be wise. I, I, Emma, I must tell you what you will not ask. Though I may wish it unsaid the next moment. Then do not speak it. Do not commit yourself to something which may injure us both to have said.
Mr. Knightley. Mr. Knightley. I stopped you ungraciously just now and gave you pain. If you have any wish to speak to me openly about anything you might have in contemplation as your friend, I cannot refuse you. Indeed, as your old friend, I will hear whatever it is you wish to tell me. Emma, you want our friendship to remain the same as it has always been. But I cannot desire that. But why? I know I made mistakes, but had you been here the last few days, you would have seen how I have tried to change. Please, tell me I am your friend. I do not wish to call you my friend, because I hope to call you something infinitely more dear. Have you not wondered why I never befriended Frank Churchill? It was because I knew he was intended for you. Indeed, w when you insulted Miss Bates at the picnic, I thought that evidence of his influence over you. And I could not bear to see it. So I, I went away but I went to the wrong place. My brother's house is usually a place of comfort to me, but seeing your sister there kept you fresh in my mind. And the torture, I assure you, was acute. I only felt hope again when I heard of Mr. Churchill's engagement. I rushed back, anxious for your feelings, keen to be near you. I rode through the rain. I'd, I'd ride through worse than that if I could just hear your voice telling me that I might at least have some chance to win you. Mr. Knightley, if I have not spoken, it is because I am afraid I will awaken myself from this dream. It cannot be true. But I feel so full of error, so, so mistaken in my makeup to deserve you. What of my flaws? I've humbled you and I've, and I've lectured you and you have borne it. No one could have borne it. Maybe it is our imperfections which make us so perfect for one another. Let's go to your father. 